Hi, I'm Chris Regano, System Engineer with EMC. In this demo, we will be showing how VMware's vCloud Automation Center, working in conjunction with EMC Viper Controller, can provision storage to an Extreme I.O. all-flash storage array. Before we begin, I'd like to review how EMC Viper and vCloud Automation Center integrate together. vCloud Automation Center is a self-service portal that allows users to provision compute, storage, and network resources. It also has a rich policy engine that enables IT administrators to control where and how those resources get provisioned. EMC Viper is a software-only storage automation platform that can fully automate the storage configuration and provisioning process. At the bottom of the graphic in the slide, you can see that EMC Viper can automate both EMC and non-EMC arrays. vCenter Orchestrator, or VCO, is an orchestration tool that comes with vCloud Automation Center. We will be leveraging pre-built EMC Viper plugins for vCenter Orchestrator to initiate Viper provisioning workflows in our demo. vCloud Automation Center acts as our self-service portal and will be passing information from a form filled out during the request process to vCenter Orchestrator. vCenter Orchestrator can be configured to integrate with vCloud Automation Center by creating an endpoint for vCenter Orchestrator. Before we can start provisioning with Viper, we, we must first discover physical components, which include the storage arrays, SAN switches, and the host we'd like for it to provision to. Discovery is set up through the Physical Assets tab in the Viper Administration GUI. As you can see in this demo, we've discovered an Extreme I.O. storage array, brocade SAN switches, and a VMware vCenter server. Once the physical components are discovered, we must create a virtual storage pool to provision storage from. Virtual storage pools act as a policy layer that control the who, the what, and the how storage will be provisioned. Virtual pools are created through the Virtual Assets tab of the Viper GUI. I have set up a virtual storage pool called Virtual Desktop Flash for this demo. This pool contains a policy that will force all storage provisioned from it to be created on an Extreme I.O. all-flash array. Now that we have all of our physical and virtual resources set up in Viper, we need to create our VCO workflow. Okay, I've logged into vCenter Orchestrator and I'm now ready to set up a basic workflow. EMC Viper ships with a vCenter Orchestrator plugin that contains a number of pre-built activities and workflows. If you expand the EMC Viper node in the library, you can see all of the pre-built workflows that come with the plugin. I'm going to be leveraging a pre-built workflow called Provision VMFS Data Store for Cluster with EMC Viper Storage as part of this demo. Here's my workflow that I built for this demo. It will be calling a Viper workflow to provision a LUN from our Extreme I.O. array and create a VMFS data store from that LUN. After that, it will add that data store to a virtual desktop pool in Horizon View. If we take a look at the inputs for this workflow, you'll notice that we're prompting for a data store name, a data store size, and the name of the view desktop pool. These inputs will correspond to fields in the request form that we build in vCloud Automation Center. Now that our VCO workflow is set up, I can set it up as a service blueprint in vCloud Automation Center. From there, it can be set up as an item in the service catalog. I went ahead and already took care of these steps, so now I'm ready to submit a new request. I'm logged into vCloud Automation Center as a VDI admin, and you'll notice that my service catalog only contains items that a VDI admin is allowed to request. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Provision Storage to View item. I need to provide a basic description of my request, and then I'll fill out the request form. My form inputs should look very similar to the inputs that I showed you earlier in my VCO workflow. I'm going to set my data store name to vmworld-extremeio-01. I can then select a default volume size of one terabyte. This is predefined as a policy per my internal organization. Go ahead and pick my cluster, which is Bellevue, and then pick my view desktop pool, which is developer. Once I submit this request, it will begin to be fulfilled. And if I want to monitor the status of that request, I can simply uh, click on the Request tab to monitor its status. If I log into vCenter, I can see that Viper has kicked off a number of storage-related tasks. This is Viper working behind the scenes to add the new Extreme I.O. LUN to the vSphere cluster. Okay, I just got notification that my request was successful. And as we can see through the Request dialog here in vCloud Automation Center, it has a status of successful. Let's flip over to the vCenter web client to see exactly what happened. In the data stores view, I have a new data store called vmworld-extremeio-01, which is what I requested in my request form. It is connected to a cluster called Bellevue and connected to all six hosts. If I want to look and see exactly what type of array this is on the back end, I can see that it is an Extreme.io fiber channel disk. Furthermore, to actually see that Viper provisioned this, 
I'm logging into the Viper interface here, and I'm going to the Volumes tab. So the Volumes tab basically gives me all the information about volumes that I've created through EMC Viper. So as you can see here, I have a volume called VMworld Extreme IO 01, which corresponds to the volume that I created inside of vCenter. And all the details about that particular volume are available here through the Viper interface. Our last step here is to log in to Horizon View to make sure that my entire workflow ran successfully. If you remember, our workflow was supposed to add the new data store that we created through EMC Viper to the desktop pool called Developer. If we log in here and we look at our desktop pools, we can see that we have one that's called Developer. Let's go ahead and look at the settings to make sure that our new LUN was added. You can see that we have two data stores selected as part of our Developer pool. Let's make sure that our VMworld ExtremeIO 01 is in the list. There it is. You can see that it has been added through our workflow. That concludes this demo. I would like to thank you for watching.